welcome my dear students to another class of english today we are going to discuss a very different poem by george herbert the pulley it is a metaphysical poem by george herbert now what is a metaphysical poem metaphysical metaphysical means highly abstract or supernatural or a reality beyond what is perceptible to the senses george herbert is known as a metaphysical poet born in 1593 lived up to 1633 he was a poet an orator and a priest of the church of england he wrote a lot of religious poems he was known as one of the best known preachers of the church the poem that we are going to be discussing today speaks about the themes which were closest to his heart this is a poem where what god taught when he was making man is brought into discussion now the title of the poem is the pulley i'm sure my dear students you all know what a pulley is don't you a pulley is an equipment as you can see in the picture it is basically a rope and a wheel arrangement where the rope passes over the wheel and this arrangement is used to pick or lift heavy weights now why is it that george herbert uses the term pulley for this poem we shall see as we read the poem the central idea of the poem in the poem the pulley george herbert creates a myth about god's creation of the world when god created man he wanted to give his new creation all all possible blessings such as wisdom beauty honor and so on the poem presents god as a benevolent loving and a caring father when god created man he showered on man all the riches he could find on earth but withheld the jewel of rest so that man could seek god when all the treasures bestowed on him would tire him out So my dear students you will see that though the title of this poem is the pulley the word pulley is not actually mentioned anywhere in the poem as i said earlier that this poem is a metaphysical poem a metaphysical poem draws its inspiration from science so you see george herbert uses the term pulley because he imagines one act of god equal to the act or the role that a pulley plays now let us see how he does that i'll read the first stanza for you and i'll explain it to you later take a look at the screen for the first stanza when god at first made man having a glass of blessings standing by let us said he pour on him all we can let the world's riches which dispersed lie contract into a span what is the poet trying to tell us here the poet says that at the time when god first created man he had a glass of blessings standing by he thought that he would be generous kind and compassionate and shower on this man 
all the possible gifts that he could so he intended to shower man to shower on man all the treasures of the earth which are right now dispersed he thought that he would gather them and give them all to man now look at the last line contract into a span the line contract into a span again this is a scientific term used a span is a distance between two points as in a span of a bridge or a span of an hour or anything else so god refers to this human body as a span and he says that he will bless this human body with many riches he says that he will bring all the riches which are scattered around the world and he will contract them into that one body contract them here means bringing them all together so he would bring all the riches which were scattered in the world and he would bestow it on that one body that is man so god in the first stanza is basically being portrayed as a generous a benevolent giver who wishes to bless man with many gifts we shall take a look at the second stanza of the poem and we focus your attention on the slide so strength first made a way then beauty flowed then wisdom honor pleasure when almost all was out god made a stay perceiving that alone of all his treasures rest in the bottom lay what is the poet trying to tell us in the second stanza the poet says when god decided to pour out his blessings on man he began with the gifts and the first gift that he bestowed on man was strength this was followed by beauty then wisdom honor and pleasure and when nearly all the gifts had been bestowed on man god stopped for a while he noticed his glass of treasures and he stopped he withheld one treasure in that glass of his the treasure that remained at the bottom of the glass was rest the third stanza for if i should said he bestow this jewel also on my creature he would adore my gifts instead of me and rest in nature not the god of nature so both should losers be but dear students in the second stanza we seen that god had poured out many blessings on man he had a glass of blessings with many gifts in them and while he was pouring out those many gifts he stopped a while he did not pour out the last gift which lay at the bottom of that glass and the last gift which was lying at the bottom of that glass of blessings was rest god said to himself that if he bestowed this precious and valuable gift on his creation man would love and worship only the gifts of nature and would not love the god who had created all the things in nature thus both god and man would finally lose each other and because god did not want both to be losers he did not bestow the gift of rest on mankind let us take a look at the last stanza of this poem yet let him keep the rest but keep them with repining restlessness let him be rich and weary that at last if goodness lead him not yet 
weariness may toss him to my breast the poet my dear students in the last stanza is saying that god let man retain all the other gifts he let man keep all the other gifts which we had which he had in the glass for him but at the same time he left man restless and continually anxious and dissatisfied he thought that man should be rich with the abundance of gifts but he should always remain tired and restless god reasoned that only then at the end if the quality of goodness did not lead man back to god it would be only fatigue or tiredness that would draw man back to god's heart so basically god has withheld the gift of rest from man because he did not want man to have this one particular gift he thought that if man had this gift he would be very satisfied with himself he would be very contented and he would not desire to have anything more he might even stop wanting to know more about god our creator or even seek his blessings and hence god withheld the gift of rest from man because he thought that if goodness at least did not lead him back to god it would be the tiredness or the restlessness that would draw man back to god's heart